Hello, and welcome to this presentation on follicular grid shells and area stress functions. My name is Cameron Miller, and I will be presenting this paper on designing plain faced follicular grid shells. My co authors are Toby Mitchell, Eric Mizurek, Ashpika Chabra, Alessandro Bagini, Alan McCroby, and Bill Baker. We hope that you enjoy this video and find the work interesting. We refer you to the paper in the conference proceedings for a technical discussion of the methods and more examples. There is also an expanded accompanying paper submitted to IJSS, which will hopefully be available soon. First of all, it is important to define our key terminology. A grid shell is a collection of bars in three space which approximate a surface. A plane face grid shell has planar faces and is a lift of the form diagram. Funicular grid shells are self-supporting without bending. The axial forces relate to a plane faced airy stress function even if the grid shell itself may not be plane faced. Some grid shells are plane faced and funicular. If the polyhedra describing the airy stress function and grid shell are different, this is called a mixed airy grid shell. In the special case where the airy stress function is a scaled version of the grid shell, this is a self airy grid shell. There is a further special case when the grid shell is funicular under a uniform projected load, this is called a UPL self airy. These definitions can be neatly summarised in a Venn diagram. A key feature of this paper is the duality displayed in graphic statics. A form diagram is lifted to form an airy stress function. The polar reciprocal of this polyhedron is constructed and then projected onto the horizontal plane to give the form diagram. The length of lines in the force diagram are proportional to the force in the reciprocal bars of the form diagram. The area of the polygons in the force diagram are proportional to the isotropic angular deficit of the area stress function for the reciprocal node. This approximates the product of principal forces at the node. This is discussed in Maxwell's 1870 paper on reciprocal figures, frames and diagrams of forces. The isotropic Gaussian curvature is the area of the reciprocal polygon divided by the tributary area of the node in the form diagram. Similarly, if one takes the plane phase grid shell, it is possible to find the polar reciprocal to it. When this is projected to the horizontal plane, a slope diagram is produced. In this situation, the distance and direction of the line in the slope diagram from the origin represents the magnitude and direction of the gradient of the reciprocal bar in the projection of the grid shell. The length of a line in the slope diagram gives the changing gradient of two faces at a bar. We will now discuss the mathematical field of isotropic geometry, which is the natural language of the airy stress function. It has been shown by Vogler et al. that 2 times the isotropic Gaussian curvature of the airy stress function times the mean isotropic curvature of the shell relative to the airy stress function is equal to the projected loading on the shell. Using terms that are more familiar to a structural engineer, the isotropic curvature is given by the Hessian, which is related to the second derivatives of the surface. This paper builds on what previous work by Vogler et al., but using engineering nomenclature. The mapping function d sigma from the shell surface to the airy stress function also has other uses for the discretization of the continuum shell and airy stress function to yield discrete plane face funicular grid shells. Self airy surfaces have numerous benefits, including close alignment of the principal stress and principal curvature directions. We ask the question what if z equals lambda phi, where z is a shell, phi is the airy stress function, and lambda is a scalar? Essentially, this is a self airy. These UPL self airy shells have constant isotropic Gaussian curvature. Using the discrete definition of isotropic Gaussian curvature, one can show that the area of the force polygon must be proportional to the tributary area of the reciprocal node in the form diagram. One intuitive way of doing this is to use an icircular mesh. This is because the Voronoi diagram of the form diagram can also be the force diagram. A few examples have been generated, including this grid shell inspired by the schwartz christoffel mapping, which allows a circular boundary in very regular planar quad panels at the centre. This is a UPL self airy grid shell. An obvious circular mesh is the discrete Mitchell truss. Using this geometry, one can construct a Mitchell dome, which is also a UPL self airy grid shell. All the results have been verified by finite element analysis, and moments throughout are essentially zero. There are also examples where the continuum solution has knots and does not have a smooth boundary. This grid shell was inspired by the work of Carl Strubecker, who wrote a paper on surfaces with constant isotropic Gaussian curvature. When discretized, one creates a plane face funicular UPL self airy grid shell. There is a wider solution space of plane face funicular grid shells, which includes mixed airy grid shells. The Timoshenko equation shows an amazing duality between the airy stress function and the shell. One can swap z and phi and obtain the same equation. Therefore, the shell and area stress function are interchangeable for the same vertical loading. Take this grid shell and consider it as the area stress function. It provides the horizontal bar forces for the dual grid shell. 
Using the force density method, one can then construct the grid shell. This is the area stress function for the original grid shell below. The area stress function is not that nice, so how can we make it better? One can induce more compression in the corners by arching them more. However, the area stress function is not very smooth, which indicates that there are large forces within the grid shell. This is where we come to Chris Williams. By using an analogy with the Beat Suffolk law, one can construct a very good area stress function surface. Using this, one gets a nice surface, and the accompanying surface is also well behaved, as demonstrated by the smoothness of the surface. We now return to discuss the slope diagram, which is a new reciprocal diagram to graphic statics. Take a form diagram. One can construct a force diagram by taking the first derivative of the area stress function. Similarly, one can construct a slope diagram by taking the first derivative of the grid shell. Therefore, the slope diagram describes the curvature of the grid shell. These three diagrams combine to describe the equilibrium conditions for grid shells. Consider a bar in three space. The vertical force in the bar is equal to the horizontal force in the bar, given by the force diagram, multiplied by the slope of the bar, which is given by the slope diagram. This vertical force can be found by considering the mixed area of the force and slope polygons. The mixed area is related to the Minkowski sum. One can drag one polygon around the perimeter of the other polygon, as shown here. The grey area in this image is equal to twice the mixed area of the two polygons. The mixed area is independent of the order of mixing. The mixed area of the force and slope diagrams is equal to half of the applied load on a given node in the grid shell. One can draw the mixed area for a node, as shown in green here. One can also combine the form, force and slope diagrams into a combined Maxwell-Mondrian diagram which describes the equilibrium of the grid shell. All of this can be powerful in the design of grid shell. By considering the grid shell and area stress function simultaneously, one can design both forces and geometry as desired. If you want a self airy grid shell, a quick and dirty way of possibly obtaining one is to take a mixed airy pair and average the height and repeat. This may converge to a self airy solution. For a mixed airy continuum solution, it is possible to digitize the surfaces along lines of principal relative isotropic curvature to obtain a plane faced grid shell and a plane faced airy stress function pair. There are many important ideas for graphic statics and grid shell design in this paper. Some key developments in this paper include the introduction of the slope diagram, the interpretation of the reciprocal areas, how the force and slope diagrams can be combined for the design of grid shells, and the duality between grid shells and area stress functions. Finally, some design methods for grid shells were presented. We hope that you enjoyed this presentation and the accompanying paper. We refer you to the paper for further details. Please also feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions or would like to discuss possible future collaboration. Thank you for watching this video presentation. We welcome any questions from the virtual audience.